Hi there, I'm Carissa Coltmans and I'm a senior product manager for Microsoft Intra ID Protection. Today I'm going to make a very quick video. The goal is three or four minutes and showing you our new risk policy impact analysis workbook that is now embedded into the portal. So the workbook has been around for about a year and a half. However, we have recently embedded it into the portal for more visibility. Uh, and we really suggest that everyone who is interested in turning on risk-based conditional access take a look at it before they do, or take a look at it to measure gaps. Okay, we're going to navigate to the intro.microsoft.com site, which is our Microsoft Intro Admin Center. We're gonna go down to ID protection, and it will bring you to this overall dashboard. This dashboard is super useful. Definitely recommend taking a look. However, it's not the focus of this demo. So I am gonna to go to the risk policy, risk policy impact analysis report. Um, that is going to pull up right here. I already have it up, so I'm gonna to move to the one that is already open. Um, at the top, you can set your workspace and you can turn the guide off and on to have more space. All right, so let's really dive in to what is being shown here. Um, you can select your time range, which is super useful. The, the, the default is 14 days, I believe. You're going to look at your impact if you would turn on risk-based CA. So let's look at the user risk scenario. A high risk user not being blocked. Okay, if I have no policies in place at this moment um, and I only have one high risk user, that, that means I'm doing pretty good. Um, every tenant is going to be different. But again, this is gonna be your information and your tenant showing up. So I wanna investigate why I have high risk users. Um, I do not want to have high risk users in my environment because that means that we have indicated someone with very high confidence has compromised and is in your uh, environment. So you definitely want to make sure that you do not have any high risk users or high risk sign-ins in your environment. But if one shows up and you don't have any policies in place, this is who would be impacted. So you're, you're gonna scroll down and you'll be able to see the details of who the user is. In this case, it's a test user because this is a demo environment. However, you would see who that user is, what they're accessing, what their sign-in risk level is currently, and you would be able to say like, okay, if I turned on a high risk block policy right now, this is who would be impacted in these past 14 days. You can also look back further, as I mentioned, if you're curious about um, you know, a three month, time three month time span or longer. You can also do the same thing for sign-in risk. Hey, I, I'm interested in turning on a sign-in risk policy for block blocking users. What would that look like? And I'm seeing that today it would impact one user if I don't have any policies in place. And I would be able to go down and say, okay, this is the user that would be impacted if I did turn on a block policy. I'm gonna keep on reiterating, if, if you do already have policies in place, then this means there is a gap and you have users getting through. So it's something that you also want to investigate. You can do the same thing if you wanna turn on MFA policies, or if you're looking to turn on just high risk need to change their password, these are all in here. They're very common scenarios that we recommend um, looking at for your risk-based CA. The second line here um, really is for the folks who do have RBCA turned on. It's saying like, hey, like which users change their password? Which ones have um, successfully signed in? Which ones have remediated? So you're kind of monitoring what's going on and making sure it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you need to continue to um, investigate. Last but not least, we have a new line that we've added recently, which is federated sign-in risk scenarios. Looking, This is for you if you have um, uh, risk going being remediated by an external identity provider. And then lastly, legacy identity protection policies. Hey, do I have any legacy policies in place today that I need to move over? These are going to be deprecated soon, so we want you to know that you have them in your um, environment still and, and start to move those over. Again, it can cause some confusion or it can cause users to unexpectedly re, you know, be required to turn on MFA if there's this, um, if these policies are still in place and you forget about them. Another very useful thing that I wanna show before the demo is over is looking at IP addresses not trusted. We hear a lot of complaints that you know, there's folks who are coming from IP addresses that you know, should be considered trusted. Well, take a look at what is you know, currently coming up as not trusted. It may mean that you have IP addresses that need to be moved to your trusted um, list. If not, it's going to continue to flag these users and, and, and mark them as an unfamiliar location detected or something like that, and they will be required to do MFA or, um, you know, they will be required to do something that you have your policy set for. So it's good to work with your networking team, making sure this list is updated. If you do recognize the ASN and the IP address, then move it on over 
to your trusted location. And this can really reduce the noise and um, the false positives. So this was a very, very quick demo, but I hope it was useful. I'm happy to answer any questions. You can reach out to me in the chat or reach out through, um, through Microsoft's uh, YouTube portal and happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.